Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Hank Strange, and uh, I'm doing a catching up video here with Franklin Armory. We have uh, Jay Jacobson, the owner of Franklin Armory. Uh, I don't know. Is that your official title, Jay? Uh, president. President. Okay. President of Franklin Armory. He's here with us. And we're doing this in conjunction with Amoland News. So you guys will be able to see the video on YouTube as well as read an article on Amoland News. Uh, Jay, thanks for doing this, man. Yeah, my pleasure. Uh, there's, it's an interesting time for everybody. So a uh, uh, good opportunity to catch up. Yeah, absolutely. So first things, you guys are in Nevada. How's Nevada handling the whole uh, COVID-19 crisis that's going on right now? In Nevada, uh, we, uh, we've got- Wait, did a, I say a, it wrong? I said it wrong, didn't I? Well, yeah, I my accent. <laughs> not trying to, uh, you know, anyhow. Yeah. Uh, we've got an uh, interesting uh, Democrat uh, governor that mm -hmm. uh, He's fairly anti-gun, but mm -hmm. I got to say, uh, he left all manufacturing open. Okay. Uh, so we have not stopped one single day. Mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, one of the things we did was just make sure we run seven days a week so that uh, we were able to reduce our uh, number of people in the facility at any one time. Okay. And keep that social distancing that keeps government happy. Um, so anyways, yeah, we've been uh, running full steam ahead, trying to fulfill the orders. Um, we, we, I think we've kept a lot of our distributors and dealers fairly happy considering mm -hmm. the circumstances. And one of the unique things we have is that, uh, and you and I have talked about this before, but all American supply chain, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we do have vendors, but it's always American materials and um, American uh, labor and so forth and American machining. And so uh, while some of our competitors are sitting there with a broken supply chain, I would, uh, you know, they, they're having a hard time because, okay, they're not going to get, you know, receivers from China or, um, or even barrel blanks and that sort of thing. They now have to go to another place to get mm -hmm. various supplies. We don't have that problem. And I hear ATF is kind of jammed up dealing with all these major manufacturers mm -hmm. that have been outsourcing to these foreign countries. And, and as we've seen with uh, protective equipment, uh, I've always said food, fuel, and firearms ought to come from your country or you're not much of a country. And now you could add medicines to that as well. Absolutely. So that's now a, a competitive advantage that, that we have as we attempt to um, fulfill the, the massive amounts of orders that uh, we're dealing with as well as the rest of the, the industry throughout the country. Okay, so did, you know, did the, um, did the Trump administration making the firearms industry an essential business help you guys or it wasn't really a factor? The reason why I ask that is I have seen some companies and maybe it's related to what you're saying now with the supply chain, some companies that are in Nevada and maybe they're even in Vegas, this is why they're having issues, are not producing things right now or on their websites it's saying you know the reason why we we're not delivering is because of the COVID-19 crisis so um, I don't know if you've seen that at all because you're saying everything's running smoothly with you guys so there's no statutory requirement from the state government or federal government that would preclude them from staying open um, it is possible that maybe their county government mm -hmm. was jamming up but um, Again, if they are an importer or um, you know in any way using a, a supply chain from overseas, that mm -hmm. could be the reason, or or, or it could be just their personal comfort. Mm -hmm. I do know that there was one um, a distributor uh, back east that uh, basically um, had us cancel an order that was actually halfway on the way to them mm -hmm. because they their warehouse personnel said we had enough, we're out of here. Okay. So what they do they had to close down. Mm -hmm. uh, so everybody reacts to it differently, and uh, I look at the numbers, and you know, obviously, when you're in business, uh, as are you, you know, you got a numbers guy mm -hmm. to be able to stay afloat, and mm -hmm. and sure, this I'm sure this is um, uh, worse than your typical flu, but if you look at the numbers here to date, they're only a little bit more than the um, uh, the standard influenza, and if you look at countries like Sweden, which they haven't closed down anything. Mm -hmm. And I know 
this firsthand. My daughter lives in Sweden, okay. uh, and and she works there. And so uh, everything's still running. They didn't close down anything. And, and I've been watching the percentages of um, uh, deaths per capita between the United States and Sweden. Mm -hmm. And throughout this whole process, uh, the U.S. has been 75% of the numbers that Sweden has. And, and so if you look at the amount of money that the government has handed out, $3 trillion at least. Mm -hmm. So far. And, I think it's more. It's, we're probably going to be way over that, maybe triple that. We, that the, that's just ridiculous mm -hmm. that we even gave out three trillion in a reaction so far. Mm -hmm. um, but in doing that, um, you really when you do the numbers, uh, we have what three hundred fifty million people, and if we have um, two hundred seventy one deaths per um, per million, and Sweden has like three hundred something, uh, whatever. So you end up maybe a delta of at this point. Um, roughly, uh, without looking at the numbers right now, maybe about 75 per million times 350 million uh, people. So then you put that into uh, the amount of dollars we've spent. Mm -hmm. uh, last time I ran the figures, I think it was like $171 million per live saved. And this thing ain't over yet. Mm -hmm. When it's all said and done, we might be at the same point that Sweden's at. So. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of upset in our economy, and you have to wonder why. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I think it's to destroy the economy so that uh, the Democrats have a shot at winning in in November. But yeah. um, that's a very um, you know speculative view. Um, I'm sure there are governors out there that are just trying to keep their people safe, but um, I think it's quite the overreach. Yeah. And let. Let everybody make their own decision and decide what they're going to do. Obviously, we had to flatten the curve in the beginning, and we've done that. Um, now let's move on with our life. Yeah, I'm wondering what the holdup is with that, and then what's the eventual cost to all of us going to be? Like you said, we're definitely going to get inflation, and that's going to affect industries. How do you think, moving forward, all of this is going to affect the firearms industry? You know, the firearms industry is interesting. Uh, when times are good, people, they go out, they buy guns. When times are bad and there's a pandemic, they go out and buy guns. Mm -hmm. uh, the one thing that will keep it um, uh, down for our industry is if there's a modest recover and everything's just moving along evenly, then people are not um, inspired to go buy a gun one way or another. Mm -hmm. We always try to create new products and create new markets, mm -hmm. and that generates a reason for folks to want to go buy guns, mm -hmm. you know, uh, mm -hmm. which is a commodities based where you're just replicating what uh, the other companies have been doing for the last 10 or 20 years. That, yeah. And, and the way to do that is, you know, competitively is to either find a faster way to make it or produce it overseas mm -hmm. because we have a standard of living than some of the other countries out there yeah find a cheaper way and you guys do you do you see your your part of the industry is kind of being niche obviously you do make um you do make guns in the ar sector but they're not really your typical ars right there's there's lots of differences with your ars kind of out of the box do you guys see yourself as being niche yeah we try to compete asymmetrically and when you say niche market i, I obviously we're not producing a hundred thousand uh, rifles a year like a, or actually even a, a what is it? Was it a million a year that uh, some of the bigger companies were doing, like Ruger or Remington or Smith and West? Um, you know, we're not that kind of volume, so we recognize our place, but mm -hmm. um, we also try to compete asymmetrically because if we try to compete directly against that kind of um, uh, economic influence that they have. I mean, they're obviously able to order 10 times what we might be able to kick out in, um, in a given year. So um, the the part of that, though, is that obviously we've got our patented products like the binary firing system, um, reformation, which is moving along, and um, also um, it, we've done some things, interesting things in California. Mm -hmm. We're the only ones to have a pistol on the roster. We had to do some engineering changes to make that happen, mm -hmm. but we successfully got uh, our, our first pistol on there two years ago, and now we've added two more pistols on there so Californians can 
buy one in 556 or 300 blackout or 350 legend yeah and, so, and that seems easy but it's a pretty expensive proposition uh, when you're looking at California and then I think you guys also have uh, um, you've got alternatives for places like New Jersey <laughs> some other places around the country where laws are rapidly changing and out of balance with everything else in the country right yeah and in fact we're suing New Jersey just as much as we're suing California mm -hmm. and with this COVID-19 stuff every the courts are using it as an opportunity to um, to delay unfortunately and uh, if any judges are listening I'm not talking bad about them I'm just uh, trying to deal with <laughs> you know our, our yeah. access to the courts and mm -hmm. it's driving me nuts to be honest with you yeah I mean and that's a tool for some people I think to to slow down progress of, of getting alternatives out there for people to defend themselves. Um, how would you, if you if you were talking to a, p a potential customer out there for Franklin Armory, which by the way, you know, I forgot to mention this at the top, but you know, full disclosure, Franklin Armory does sponsor the podcast that we do. So if you were talking to customers out there, how would you tell them to look at you versus everyone else? Because one, one of the questions I get all the time is, well, you know, why, why is Franklin Armory so much more expensive? Why this thing? Why that thing? And I think that people don't really see that equation that we're talking about here. Yeah, I mean, part of it is that we do it 100% American materials, um, American labor, American machining. And you, you find very few companies that are willing to commit to that. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the larger ones, once they get to that point, they're very happy to import stuff. So. Mm -hmm. um, it's just been part of our philosophy, and we realize that uh, that we do cost a bit more. But you're not going to find that our products are uh, have been um, you know undercut by using um, poor materials from you know somebody overseas that certified something that wasn't really what it is. Mm -hmm. In America, people are litigious, and, and they know that if they say it is like a material supplier, they're going to give you exactly mm -hmm. what they say it is because their credibility and their livelihood depends on that. Mm -hmm. Somebody overseas can get away with it. So mm -hmm. there is that benefit and that quality that they can um, depend on. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we realize that there are it, it is a competitive market, obviously, and so that's why we always try to go at it uh, asymmetrically and innovate stuff that uh, – just fills a void that wasn't there before mm -hmm. and so that is the customers coming to us are coming because we do make a good rifle mm -hmm. we do support american jobs and that's more important now than ever we've actually hired uh, about uh 20 percent more since the beginning of um march than uh than we had say in february or even at chacho so okay have uh, you guys gotten any funding from the government to help out with that um you know that's kind of a interesting subject. Okay. Uh, we'll leave that okay. alone. There's a whole bunch of uh, yeah. uh, interesting stuff from that. So oh, okay, uh, yeah. And um, um, anyhow, so we have been increasing our ranks, and mm -hmm. we're going to be getting another building here mm -hmm. that uh, hopefully get it all squared away by the end of this week. And we've got new machines coming. Okay. Uh, so not only and those, by the way, are, are mostly American machines. Mm -hmm. uh, we buy a lot of Haas equipment, uh, which does a good enough job to get the fine tolerances that we need. Um, you know, we're, we're really working hard on that. And then we're also got a, another DMG Mori mill turn coming in for uh, the complex turn mill turn parts that, that we do. Okay. Haas is CNC machines, right? Yeah. Yeah. Made uh, down in uh, Southern California. Mm -hmm. And I think they're actually expanding to Nevada as well. So okay. again, American jobs, mm -hmm. uh, any any chance we can, I'd rather keep the money in country than send it overseas. Yeah. One of the things I always try to tell people when this question comes up to me, right? Uh, obviously, like you said, there's the quality. But one of the things I try to tell people is that um, when the government, whether it's state, whether it's local or, or federal, when they keep putting things in your way of you being able to defend yourself, Right. You know, the Second Amendment says shall not be infringed, but we've got all these infringements on there. So if you were in a free state, absolutely, you could go get yourself an AR for, I don't know, four or five hundred bucks and get a decent AR. Like you said, you know, there's lots of things getting produced out there. But if you're in a state that has made that more difficult and then someone comes in and finds ways of, of giving you an option that otherwise wouldn't exist, it costs to, it costs to get that done. 
there's an added cost for that. And if, if you don't want to look at those things, then maybe we should uh, get out there, vote, pay attention to the politics. I know a lot of people don't want to get political, but when it comes to guns, you have to get political because you have to try to defend something that uh, this is one of the few things I could think about that we consume that's actually protected by the Second Amendment, the, by the Constitution. Right? Well, that and media, right? Huh? That and media. That and media, yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, this is a tangible thing that could defend you, though. Media, oh, okay. uh, you know. Say that. Yeah, 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 that's true. That's true. So, so the point I try to make to people is that you're, if you're not doing that, and then restrictions are getting uh, tighter and tighter in your state, and you're looking for options, what exactly are you going to do? These guys are working outside of the box, but developing those things is more expensive. Maybe if, you know, maybe if we... If machine guns weren't illegal, we could do we we could have a lot more options. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, like California, we got to go through the drop testing. We got to send multiple guns so they can go destroy them. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so, and, and then eventually you get on on the roster if you change things and do things right. So we, mm -hmm. we get it on there. We go through all that effort, and um, we're not changing our margins just because we got it on the roster. I mean, it cost us that to bring it to market and make it happen. Mm -hmm. So. And, and the government knows this. They're 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 creating these issues on purpose. They they want to um, cost you every time. In California, especially, they want to um, create it so that you have to pay more at the draws fees, and then you got to wait ten days. And oh, by the way, they may not be able to deliver it in ten days. They're now taking thirty days. But if you go thirty one days, then you got to go redo your paperwork. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, it's harassment. is yeah. all it really is. Yeah. And. All the Karens in the world, and by the way, I love that term because my <laughs> wife is Karen. Uh oh. And uh oh. <laughs> she spells it with an I. Not oh, a. okay. And so um, mm -hmm. all the Karens of the world yeah. are just flipping out, but we've converted many of them, and they're realizing, oh wow, you know, the cops are not always going to be here when I call. Mm -hmm. You know, my ranch is out in the middle of nowhere. If I call the sh the sheriff, they'll show up in an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you're on your own for. An hour and twenty nine minutes. Yeah. So, and that's um, a lot of places in America. Yep. You know, it, it certainly is. Mm -hmm. And so, um, for once, though, these folks in the city, the Karens in the city, are sitting there going, "Oh, wait a second. Yeah, um, I can't depend on uh, Barney to be there right away. I'm going to have to make it." And, and no offense to cops, sorry. Mm -hmm. I, you know, um, I'm an old truck driver, so mm -hmm. safety lingo comes out every now and then. Uh oh. Um, so, um, mm -hmm. anyhow. Um, you know, they need to be able to defend themselves and realize that all of a sudden the, the, the cops may not be there if they're overrun and busy with other projects. Yeah. And then when you're fighting these cities in some in some uh, situations, cities, states, etc., it costs money. It kind of doesn't work like if you get into a car accident and then the lawyer represents you for, for free. And if you don't win, there's no expenses. <laughs> you know, I mean, it well, just doesn't work that way. Huh? It let, let's talk about uh, mm -hmm. something called Title One, if, if you're ready. To yeah, go absolutely. That. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so in California, we're um, we've been in this battle ever since um, October when we were at NASGW down in Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, they said they were going to put a different type of firearm classification on their computer system. They still haven't done it. Here it is. Seven months later. Yeah. So, Basically. so in other words, like another form that you have to fill out in order to purchase your Title One firearms. Right. So okay. uh, you got rifles, you got shotguns, you got pistols. Mm -hmm. Well, we created something that wasn't going to run afoul of the assault weapons law. That's not a rifle, not a shotgun, not a pistol. Mm -hmm. And um, so, in our process, what we did was we. We finally got DOJ, uh, Cal DOJ, to agree that it's not um, not one of those things, and so now they have. Uh, they're actually trying to create a new law to out. They've actually got a line on line item on the bu budget, uh, the governor's budget, about a million dollars to set up a new system mm -hmm. to prevent uh, to register these uh, firearms whenever. Um, they get it passed by the, the legislature, and they're actually trying to make it retroactive so it would be effective July 1 mm -hmm. of this year, even though it may the law itself might not go through the whole channel until January 1. They want to backdate it, which mm -hmm. to me sounds like an ex post facto law. Mm -hmm. I'm not 
attorney, but um, you know, there's plenty of them that probably watch the show that can comment on that. Um, so the whole deal is that um, we're trying to get in to sue them in the courts, but because of COVID-19, we haven't had our day in court. Mm -hmm. They created the budget item, and that hasn't been approved yet, but they're trying to make that happen. And I think while that was moving along, um, it was just today that we saw the legislative um, wish list that the DOJ is trying to get out there. Mm -hmm. What it includes in there would be a new law that would uh, restrict uh, firearms that are not rifle, shotguns, or pistols, but would otherwise, by their definition, be an assault weapon. And so I'll grab this right here, and here's Title I. Um, this is a billet version on this one, um, clear weapon. But um, in any case, um, what we're looking at here is it doesn't have a stock, so it's not a rifle. Okay. The barrel's 16 inches, so it's not a pistol, and it doesn't fire shots, so it's not a shotgun. So in California, um, it would have a standard magazine release, mm -hmm. and if you happen to own uh, magazines lar larger than 10 rounds, you would be able to use that with this firearm uh, in California. The way, uh, the way the law is written right now. The way it's written right now, okay. and basically because DOJ has published um, information saying that they want a new law, that basically uh, demonstrates that this is absolutely 100% legit. In fact, in our correspondence with our attorneys to their attorneys, they have actually admitted that, gee, we're right, they do need to change the website to allow other, this is another, um, but they just haven't gotten around to it because, gee, it's too hard for them to do that. I think they're a little bit disingenuous. I mean, they had a, a situation where they forgot UAE in the list of countries where a person could have been born. Mm -hmm. Well, they had that fixed in 30 days. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot they can do if they want to. Right. Yeah. And even if it's a government website, which those two words should put the fear of God into anybody, mm -hmm. uh, they should be able to get that squared away in, in this amount of time. So it's obvious to me that their goal is to try to um, to drag their feet, mm -hmm. both in court and on the website, so that mm -hmm. hopefully, in their point of view, that they get a law passed before we ever get a chance to sell one of these. So yeah. um, we've come up with some interesting solutions. Okay. And one of them is we're going to sue, and part of the lawsuit is we're going to sue for damages. Mm -hmm. And in suing for those damages, basically, um, every one of the orders that we have that we can't ship, there's we're going to ascribe a, a lost profit to that value and go after them. Interesting. What we're, also, okay. what we're also hoping to do is to make it so that consumers can place an order for one of these. And, and, and I have to say, I'm not an attorney, so I, I don't know exactly how this is all going to work. Mm -hmm. But we're going to sue them. And um, there's going to be a disposition required for all those people that placed orders. If it ends up that they can't get them delivered, um, that they will either also be able to sue for damages or perhaps they might even be grandfathered in. Um, there's a whole bunch of different uh, yeah. things, opportunities. I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but it's kind of like going to a baseball game. You got to pay to go to get into the park before you can watch the game. Yeah. And uh, it's, if it's... you want to. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. If you want a front row seat, it's really not that hard. We're just doing a refundable five dollar deposit. Mm -hmm. So, worst case scenario, we'll just refund them all, and 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 everybody will get that. Yeah, that's back. cheaper than the Cybertruck. So, <laughs> I don't know what that is. Oh, so, you don't? Uh, okay. <laughs> that's the uh, Tesla, the Tesla all electric truck that's coming out in the future. I bet they got a pretty healthy deposit on that. Yeah, one. I think everyone deposited. I want to say that it was either fifty or a hundred bucks, something like that. I I put a deposit down because you know, I wanna I wanna see what that looks like. Uh, you know, decked out for a gun guy. Is it faster than an Audi? Uh, very very much so. That's what oh, I hear. No. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you guys are work. You guys are really working really hard here to give people options other than just saying let's build AR-15s. You know, like they're going out of style and try to sell as many as we can, even though we know that these guys every day are working to take this away. I think one of the things they're also just waiting for political cover. Maybe they get 
the right folks in the White House, maybe they get a super majority and then they just make it really difficult for us. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, that's always the potential, right? So um, if the economy goes bad and these governors are doing the best they can to destroy the economy mm -hmm. uh, um, and uh, we don't recover this from this in the third quarter, like uh, President Trump is hoping for, then it's a strong likelihood people will uh, be disenchanted and want to vote for somebody else. But can you imagine Biden actually making it as president? And supposedly in the Senate, it's a really tight race. So you might end up with a 50-50 split. And then whoever the vice president is ends up being the person making that final call. Oh, yeah. So, And that's, this, that's highly likely to be someone very, very radical because that's the direction they're going in. And that person is also very highly likely to wind up being president, in my opinion. Oh. Anyway, because, you know, we've got issue. It, Biden, we don't know how long he's actually going to make it. You know, he well, might even funny. be a placeholder right now. Huh? Uh, it's funny you say that. My theory is, um, and just because I'm somewhat cynical, is that uh, wouldn't it be crazy if, um, if he and uh, Bernie were to catch COVID-19 and then, of course, we would have to do more to, in our society mm -hmm. to pr protect the elderly. Mm -hmm. uh, so shut down even longer. And oh, by the way, we would have to take a new vice president candidate. Uh, and who knows who that might be, but it would be somebody essentially appointed instead of uh, primarily elected. So, uh, you know, yeah. that could be uh, pretty sketchy on that side. Yeah, it sounds like a conspiracy theory, but we're talking about the uh, left here. And yeah, well, we know that I'm, that's that happens. <laughs> I'm just a cynic, so yeah, I me too, me too. I, I wish all very good health, and, mm -hmm. and, and no matter what happens in yeah. the election, uh, you know, I don't ever wish ill on on, a, on anybody. But I could just see that happening, mm -hmm. and somebody behind the scenes, a Clinton type, you know, going around and controlling that and making that happen. Yes, absolutely. And I think we're we're really in danger here of people tuning out from what's happening and not really turning out and voting. And you could, you could just tell from going into this crisis, all the new gun people that came into the fold, you can, mm -hmm. you know, you can see that they believe the same thing that we do, but they don't believe it until they're under that kind of pressure. And then they realize, hey, we, we might be at risk here. We might have to fend for ourselves and defend ourselves. And then they start worrying about it. Well, if that's the case, you should be worried every day because um, people on both the left and right are working every day to take uh, take away our gun rights from us. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, it's uh, even uh, difficult for the folks that uh, that believe in guns, you know, just trying to, you know, make sure that people that have CCWs that actually carry because you never know what's going to happen. Right. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I, I carry every day, as I'm sure you do. And mm -hmm. absolutely. It, We've got some folks in the factory that have CCWs, and it's like, why aren't you carrying every day? You know? Anyhow, just, yes. you know, I'm with you on that one. Yes, I'm with you on that one. Obviously, you know, they're free people, and they could do what they want to do, but, you know, they're doing it wrong. But the, the, com the, the correlation to what you were talking about mm -hmm. is just the, the fact that people going along and feeling safe mm -hmm. until they realize, oh, wait a second, there is a danger out there, and you never know when that's going to happen. Yeah, you know? yeah. Sometimes a lot of people feel that way, Jay, because we, we carry. And I, I'm always disappointed when people tell me that. They're like, oh, I'm, I'm around you a lot. And you do, like, I, I'm not thinking about you necessarily when things go wrong. Don't depend on me to be there, you know. You, you right. need to depend on yourself. And, and those moments don't um, come when you expect them. So everyone needs to be able to defend themselves and don't uh, leave that up to anyone else. Right, right. And and here I am, the guy with the Franklin Armory jacket. If I'm at the bank or someone else, who do you think? Or yeah, somewhere else? yeah that guy's a danger think? immediately, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. or any of us guys who look too tactical. I try to go out of my way to not look too tactical. You know, this is tactical fat, Jay. It's very deliberate. I don't want to look too too svelty, you know, too muscular. And, you know, well, I don't want to that, look... That's very wise of you yeah <laughs> i hear you i'm yeah. working on it yeah that's what i tell lola she doesn't believe it she's like yeah you need to stop that um okay so listen obviously 
Um, there's there's lots of things going on here in the political spectrum that can affect everything. I, I think that you know before we get out of here, folks would like to know what's going on with the products from Franklin Armory for the guys out there that are familiar with your products at Shot Show, which was the last big gun show we had. You guys announced um, the 1022 trigger. What was that called again? Uh, 22 C1 is uh, what we labeled it as, okay. and it's moving right along. Uh, we had. Uh, told everybody we're going to get it out before the end of the second quarter and actually I was making calls um, to some of our vendors as well as confirming with our own machine shop about different things of mm -hmm. when everything's going to be coming in and our plan is to actually uh, hopefully be shipping by June 15th that keeps us well within that uh, um, time period so we, we do have a, um, a list of uh, orders from dealers and distributors mm -hmm. and you know, keep an eye on our Facebook page and other social media outlets and, and website because we will be opening this up to consumers uh, before we actually start shipping and uh, it will be allocated between the dealer distributor orders and the consumer orders so it's fair to everybody. Oh, okay. We just want to open it up earlier and then be holding on to people's money and, and not being able to ship until it was ready. So um, we're going to have many thousands of these uh, that will start shipping out in June and throughout the summer. And uh, we'll see how um, how the workload is and what people are looking for, and and um, we'll definitely uh, scale up to meet that demand. Yeah, I think lots of people are looking forward to this. Probably the the most popular gun out there. I'm not. I, I can't say that it's more popular than the AR-15, but 1022s. Come on. It, it, yeah. It's a lot of fun. Um, mm -hmm. When I was testing it, I actually was testing it with my wife and my nine-year-old son mm -hmm. and uh, and let them have some turns at it, it, it's not um, as loud as dealing with an AR mm -hmm. it, it's really a lot of fun absolutely and I think this will appeal to a whole different market mm -hmm. and of course we got all the features for safety that uh, mm -hmm. we had in the AR version you can cancel that second round a lot of people don't know that mm -hmm. all you got to do is modulate the safety back to semi mm -hmm. with your, uh, with your offhand and um, it'll reset to the sear, mm -hmm. uh, or you can go all the way to safe. And then, obviously, if you pull the, um, the trigger in semi, mm -hmm. it will prevent you from moving to binary, so that you can never pull in semi, fire, and then that modulate. Relates. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay. That's that's interesting. Um, I, I look forward to seeing that myself. Uh, any other new things we can look forward to? Jane? There are some other things that we're working on that uh, okay. are still uh, super secret squirrel stuff. Okay, I won't tell anyone, you know, and these guys who are listening <laughs> won't tell anyone. Well, were there things that were coming out for NRA that maybe you guys uh, pushed down the road or there, there, there wasn't a plan for anything new to be released at NRA? Um, there there were not big plans to okay. release whole bunch of stuff there. It was, it was basically, you know, to tell when we'd be shipping 1022 um, parts we just discussed. So, okay. All right. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm sure folks are uh, looking forward to see the new stuff that we can't talk about right now. So. Yeah. Yep, yeah, definitely. There's a lot of good stuff going. And uh, you know, for those in California, if they um, get in on the deposits, it gives them a ticket to the game for mm -hmm. title. And I really look forward to actually delivering all those orders for, for this firearm. Um, but, uh, you know, I'd like to stick it to DOJ, too, at this point, because they're, they're, they're pretty much making it personal. Yeah, they need to be stuck, too. Uh, one quick thing before we go. I noticed on the website, and let's see if I can, I can run this in here, um, B&T Firearms on the website. Uh, oh, yeah. Currently, everything's out of stock, but uh, what's, going, what's the B&T deal here? So we sell a uh, BNT binary trigger. It, it is designed for the the BNT, and so uh, to make it easy on on consumers, we um, um, met up with BNT, and they were able to make us a um, a distributor. And so what we do okay. is we receive those firearms, put our trigger system in it, and then resell it. And it, it really comes through as a convenience and actually a very competitive pricing. Uh, for our dealers and consumers that like, that like now, that right now with the COVID-19 and you know international um, shipments and so forth that uh, we are a little bit behind on that and mm -hmm. uh, we would look forward to getting caught up on uh, getting more B&Ts in and um, 
uh, putting triggers on, in them and get them out there. So okay. um, it's out there. It is an option. And, uh, you know, I, I assume the next couple of months we'll, we'll have better supply. Oh, okay. I, w- I would look forward to seeing you guys doing this with other um, with other brands and manufacturers as well. I think there's some, some other companies out there that folks would be glad to have that um, – to have the binary come included in it. And I think maybe even in some places, it would actually help people to be able to get these if you you know, if you look at all the different rules and regulations and things like that that are floating around out there. Yeah, yeah like Florida, for example, obviously, mm-hmm. um, if it is equipped in the gun right from the beginning, mm-hmm. then there's never an add-on feature, mm-hmm. right? Which yeah. is one of the elements in, in the Florida law. Yeah. Um, but uh, incidentally, we've been talking to some folks in Florida, some. Um, some sheriffs and so far, so far uh, throughout the state, and they're actually the ones we've talked to have been very interested in pursuing this issue, and um, hopefully we'll be able to affect some change with the binary in Florida mm-hmm. um, in in the very near future. But uh, yeah, there's uh, some um, companies in let's say Germany or um, maybe the Czech Republic, without mm-hmm. naming names. Okay. <laughs> We would love to uh, set up a uh, situation where we take the responsibility off of them by receiving the firearms, mm-hmm. uh, swapping out the uh, trigger groups for the mm-hmm. ones we make for that product line, mm-hmm. and redistributing them. And, and I know Dave, our sales guy, has reached out to him mm-hmm. to set some of that up, um, but uh, who knows, maybe there's uh, some other companies uh, after they hear this interview that maybe they'd be interested in coordinating on that. Okay. It definitely t- liability off of them from their you know, right. foreign. So are you guys not interested in uh, the U.S. based companies for this? Um, well, I think uh, we do have an OEM program mm-hmm. uh, for those companies if uh, they would like, say, um, you know, maybe they make a nine millimeter AR or something like mm-hmm. that, which we don't make. We'd be happy yeah. to um, uh, sell them the triggers at an OEM price and um, oh, okay and then that company would sell it so let's say for example a PSA that makes um, an AKB that's nine millimeter if someone wanted that that binary for it then they would get it from PSA for example yeah well that could and, go either way I mean okay. uh, with the AK product um, and a domestic manufacturer I haven't really um, mm-hmm. uh, done the math on that but that's definitely something that can go either way yeah i can see lots of interest in that so for example you know there's a mp5 clone coming out Mm -hmm. some point this year i hear Mm -hmm. from a very good source (laughs) that i won't mention so yeah i think there's lots of options in this okay awesome i I don't want to keep you here but uh, i think we got lots of good information out of this jay jacobson i want to thank you for coming in um, as well as supporting uh, our efforts on the podcast side of what we do Sometimes you show up there. Sometimes uh, Son and Brandon and other uh, folks over at Franklin uh, show up there and uh, help answer questions for people, and we appreciate that. Oh, yeah, my pleasure. I, I'd rather be the guy lurking on the side, the <laughs> subject matter guy. But uh, yeah, you know, it's always a pleasure, Hank, and uh, always uh, enjoy seeing you coming out this way for uh, SHOT Show and all that. And so uh, appreciate what you do and getting the word out for everybody. Oh, thank you. And if you, when those new things come out, please let us know. Oh, there's a lot of new things coming, so yes. okay. it'll, be, it'll be soon. Awesome. Look forward to it. Okay, thanks very much. All right, guys, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe here to the channel. Ring the bell so you can be notified every time we go live. Thanks a lot. We're out of here. Peace. Take care. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.